Hello and welcome back to the Crypto Club podcast. I'm Gons, as always, joined with Mr. Hobo. Say hello, Hobo. Hello, greetings. This is episode 10 of the Crypto Club. Ooh, I feel like we just filmed episode 7 last week. <laughs> right, right. Jesus. Yep, um, kind of not a super exciting week compared to what's happened recently. Um, nonetheless, we're seeing a slight re- rebound in the markets in general. Um, yeah, a little bit of a relief rally. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens from here. Definitely, because uh, there's no telling what it can. You know what's going to happen next. There's so much uncertainty, not in crypto markets, but globally. Right. I will say. Um, Data from it was either last week or this week um, was showing that at least in the stock market, retail was finally starting to capitulate. Um, mm. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see how it pans out. You know what? We should start going over the the fear and greed index for Bitcoin as well. Mm, true. I do enjoy that as like a good metric to follow the markets. Right, let me just pull See it up. where we're at. Yeah. We are at an 11. Extreme fear. I hit, I believe we hit 8 earlier in this week. Yeah, last week was 9. Yeah, and I think we saw an 8 somewhere. So okay. that explains the relief rally a little bit. Yeah, let's see. And so if you're not aware, basically the lower the score, the more fear there is in the market. And generally speaking, you want to buy... Whenever you see, you know, extreme fear, because typically you'll get some sort of like relief rally or, you know, some kind of upward price movement shortly after. Yeah, I mean, um, we've been to an in extent. extreme fear since the, about the 9th of May. <laughs> you know? Yes. Well, I, and like, I was going to add, as far as like short term trades, these aren't, right. you know, positions you want to hold long term, um, especially with what's going on in the macro. But, you know, day-to-day or week-to-week trades uh, this is actually like really helpful for me personally for sure but uh yep enough about the market let's dig into this week's stories so starting off here we're talking about dydx which is a decentralized leverage trading platform moving to cosmos um which is the later one blockchain for their v4 platform to optimize decentralization and trading flow so the protocol chose cosmos as the best fit as it would not only need decentralization but also the ability to handle and scale 1000 orders per second on thursday crypto derivatives platform dydx which is currently built on ethereum layer 2 announced that it would be moving to a standalone blockchain based on the cosmos sdk and Tendermint Proof-of-Stake Consensus for its V4 update. The firm cites the Cosmos blockchain's decentralization and performance as reasons for being a best fit for building DYDX for V4. Currently, the existing DYDX protocol processes about 10 trades per second and 1,000 order placements and cancellations per second, with the goal of scaling to magnitudes higher. However, the firm says that neither... Ethereum Layer 1 nor Layer 2 solutions can meet its requirements for throughput speed while also satisfying its 100% decentralization requirement by the end of the year. Um, you know, if I'm not mistaken, the average block on Ethereum is far more than a second. So, uh, Several times more than that. I mean, generally speaking, the average is like 14 to 17. Yeah. So, yeah I mean, that's so, really an issue when you're dealing with precision leverage trading you know you can only place a trade every 14 seconds so is that all that dydx really offers is just you know they also have like trading? there's a dow aspect to it i believe and perhaps staking but yeah dydx is a decentralized leverage trading platform oh okay i want to say well, you can I... do up to like 20x leverage okay that's good at least they're not doing like some crazy 100x thousand no leverage. <laughs> yeah. but uh 
Yeah, so all DYDX code will be open source and the protocol itself will run on open permissionless networks with no services being operated by parent entity DYDX Incorporated. All validators and node operators will run the core node software, which will handle consensus, off-chain order book matching, deposits, transfers, withdrawals, and price oracles. In addition, traders will not need to pay, pay gas fees to trade, but only fees for executed trades similar to that of DYDX v3 and centralized exchanges. Fees will then be distributed as rewards to validators and stakers. Furthermore, DYDX seeks to bridge blockchains by leveraging Cosmos's er, sorry, inter-blockchain communications protocol. This way, DYDX can bridge digital assets such as stablecoins directly from other secured chain from other secured chains on Cosmos. Top priorities in development include the transfer of collateral for trading from slash two blockchains such as Ethereum as well as centralized exchanges. Since its inception last February, the protocol has processed over six hundred twenty six point six billion dollars in digital asset derivatives trading volume. Ooh. I remember there was one day. Um, I want to say late last summer where DYDX did more volume than Binance did. I remember DYDX soared on that news. Yes, I remember hearing that as well. Um, I'm sure they're doing pretty well now because lately everything is really just leverage trading in this current market. There's not really that. And, you know, we had like NFTs for a month last month. Um, those seem to have kind of died down a bit. Um we actually have started seeing like some some decent volume back into like um, low market cap coins and stuff like that. But right. yeah, I'm, I'm sure DYDX is doing very well in this market. I would yeah. imagine for sure. You know, I mean, as traders lose faith in whatever tokens they're holding, they just get bored and want to play with their money. And so, why, why not let it trade? aka gambling addiction <laughs> yeah, right right it's it, a, it, i mean there's a fine line what it is yeah yeah to an extent um i mean that's why i'm kind of glad that they at least do 20x leverage like it's not it's you not know th there's, thousand there's a little more technicality behind it at that point i i know you like your thousand x leverage no i'm done with leverage trading <laughs> so. <laughs> so done uh but no i mean it, I might check out DYDX because uh, it sounds like that's literally what they're all about. So Yeah, but <laughs> but you're done with leverage trading. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel about Cosmos? Mm. Um, I mean, it sounds like it must be pretty good if DYDX is moving there to um, get away from downfalls of Ethereum. You know, I'm really not all that familiar with the intricacies of the chain. Um, I've traded Cosmos a little, a little bit, but I have not actually accessed the Cosmos chain or anything like that. Yeah, it it honestly just, I mean, here here's my my take on all these chains is, you know, you you have all these different you know blockchains that are faster or less gas fees. Um, and that's usually all that they can really provide as far as value goes. Yeah. And I don't think it's enough. I think that we'll see the same thing we've been seeing with, you know, AVAX and all these other different chains. Like they, they get a little bit of, of hype and, and popularity and ultimately they just fade away. Um, and people start using it really, Binance Smart Chain kind of solved the whole, you know, speed and, and gas fee issue. Right. And they were, I believe, the first or one of the first to do it. And so they've kind of cemented that value proposition for the market. So these ultimately, these developers are going to have to get a lot more creative um, in how they solve blockchain issues and problems and how they bring value to the market in order to truly, you know, cement themselves in the crypto industry because this is just going to end up like you know what happened with avex like they they did well for a few months and and people were you know transferring funds over and then suddenly out of nowhere it was like a complete 360 um i remember even seeing the 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 graphs where they showed the volume coming in and out mm -hmm. of avex 
and there was a tipping point and then all of a sudden it was a complete inverse like from green to red same size yeah and just completely 360 so um yeah <laughs> there's there's gonna need to be a, a better you know there's there's got to be more value more value created on you know other blockchain other blockchains to get people to move and stay right yeah. people will move for the quick returns but they're not going to stay unless there's really something unique there or innovative for sure you know um the thing about the binance smart chain is it's not truly decentralized you know i mean that's why it's able to have such low fees and process so many transactions is because of that um, yeah i don't remember what exactly the situation is regarding that but i know like binance itself plays a role in that um and if i'm not mistaken i'm pretty sure cosmos is its own uh, standalone blockchain you know it's not like avax or matic where it's a layer two and it operates um on an evm network so essentially like a mm -hmm. virtual ethereum network um but it's more so like we like we've seen with Solana, right? Where it's its own blockchain now. Solana uses a different type of code, so it's really kind of bizarre mm -hmm. and different than what you typically see. Um, I'm not Correct, sure yeah. about Cosmos, but you know, I think it's worth noting that difference there. That it's not a layer two; it is its own blockchain. Um, I also think, you know, it makes me really kind of just think about ethereum's ability i mean you know, i mean you always hear about scalability issues you know i mean if dydx is having to move off of ethereum because of this and they're just a single leverage sharing platform um you know it makes me wonder what what blockchain is really going to stand out for those massive projects that need that scalability well it also you know another example of that is uh is Yuga Labs and, and ApeCoin and, mm. you know, their their whole ecosystem. They they were, you know, in talks about moving to a different chain or, or making their own because Ethereum was just un, unsupportable for their level of, you know, transactions, especially when minting. Right, the um, 9,999. It was like 12,000, man. <laughs> it was 12,000 GUI at some point. Um, and rightfully so, right? So... It's it's gonna be interesting to see that, and I get it, right? Like Cosmos has their own, you know, they're not an EVM, um, but at the same time, it's it's also like Solana, like Solana's, you know, okay, it's it's an NF, it's an NFT focused blockchain, and you know, same thing, right? Transaction speed and low gas fees, but that's all that these you know alternative solutions are offering, and it's just not simply enough. There, there's got to be something new or innovative. For sure. um, I'm, I'm on Cosmos's website now, and, and I don't really see anything here that like really strikes me as like you know they're they're changing the game. This is just basically like a you know another chain like Ethereum, but just faster, less fees, and you know decentralized. But yeah, yeah, that doesn't motivate me to move or, or transfer over, but. Um, I mean, to each their own, right? Maybe there's there's something I'm not aware of or ignorant of, but I definitely think that you know over time we'll eventually see some some developers create you know new blockchains that quite simply offer you know groundbreaking technology or, or value to the market, and then we will see a shift away from Bitcoin and Ethereum. For sure. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if we'll really see a shift away from Ethereum just because of how much value is locked up in smart contracts on Ethereum as well as how much, you know, like secondary infrastructure there is built for Ethereum. I um, mean, you know, and that's not saying that it's impossible, but I think for the foreseeable future, it would be highly unlikely. I think it's 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 hard to say with technology, right? Because... Technology is only as good as its utility goes. And again, I mean, and I get what you're saying, right? It's definitely not going to be something that happens overnight. And it's definitely not going to be something where, 
when something is developed, Ethereum is just going to fade away immediately, right? It's going to be a gradual process. But um, if there is some kind of newly developed blockchain that just simply blows everybody's mind and it's insanely good and, you know, whatever it offers, um, then you you will see, you know, a large portion of, you know, people using Ethereum move ship because that, that's what happens, right? Um that that's just what happens in the technology world, right? We're seeing it with electric vehicles, right? Five years ago, electric vehicles were kind of like a joke, and now everybody and their mom wants a Tesla. For sure. Um, because it, it's just simply being adopted. There's a slow curve of adoption, and then it just ramps up to, like, insane levels. And so, again, technology is only as good as its utility. Back then, electric cars were a joke, you know, 150 miles per charge. Um, and they were really ugly cars like the Chevy Spark and the Chevy yeah. Bolt and the Toyota Prius. Like, nobody wants that. But right. Do you have a cheese takes, wedge? In, exactly. But then it takes, like, an innovator to build something that actually brings real value and improve, improvement to the space, a.k.a. Tesla and, and Elon. And now all of a sudden there's real value there and, and people will gravitate towards that and jump on the next train because ultimately what you have to remember about the human condition is that we do like to, you know, consider ourselves to be ahead of the game and we want to jump on the next trend. That's why we always see constant trends evolving and changing in, in multiple different sectors of the world. And so, if there's a new trend in crypto, this new blockchain that comes out that's insane, or, you know, maybe it's it's GameFi related or, you know, in, like direct integration with phones and cars or who knows. But, you know, something to that level, right, like you will see a slow ramp at first, but then it will get insane and Ethereum will probably die out at that point. Um, but again, this is like all speculation and stuff, but that's that's how humans work. Right. Um, you know, on that note of integration with phones i say we move on to this next story here talking about solana um developing a smartphone to speed up web3 adoption there you go <laughs> yeah uh, so in an audacious move to jumpstart web3 adoption solana announced on june 23rd it is developing a smartphone Yes, that's right. Solana, one of a handful of layer one smart contract platforms, is making a telephone. Called Saga, the smartphone is part of Solana's new mobile first effort, which the company is calling Solana Mobile Stack, also known as SMS. And 829 of the phones have already been pre ordered as of June 23rd, according to Dune Analytics Query. Um, so it's time for Web3 devs to start building for mobile users rather than around mobile users, wrote Solana's co-founder Anatoly Yak Yakovenko on the launch. The blockers for achieving this goal are clear. The App Store policies of Google and Apple haven't evolved for Web3. Yakovenko went on to criticize the current lack of custody solutions on mobile as well as general lack of software-hardware integration. Manufacturing smartphones is no easy thing. It involves supply chains, accessing raw materials, managing labor, and executing design and software projects that even giants such as Apple and Samsung find challenging. Solana's network has suffered periodic outages. In May, it went down for seven mm -hmm. hours after it was besieged by a swarm of bots trying to mint NFTs. The project, which has a market cap of $13 billion, said its plans to release the phone in 2023 but did not disclose how much capital it will invest in the project. The Solana Foundation is establishing a $10 million fund for developers. Yet with SMS and the Saga phone, Solana appears to be trying to take matters of Web3 adoption into its own hands. Crypto has generally been a desktop-first experience, partially because of security concerns with interacting with protocols on mobile devices. Um, you know, I think it's cool that we're seeing a lot of these projects just cut to the chase and develop this you know sort of adoption infrastructure that is needed for um crypto to really become mainstream as far as usability i mean it's become mainstream uh, over the last year or so as far as publicity but as far as actual usability and um just how many people are using it I would not say it's adopted. You know, the technology just is not quite no. there yet. 
not at all. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a perfect article. This is what it will take, right? Um, you know, to appeal to to the masses, it cannot just be desktop only. Um, as much as we love MetaMask and Uniswap and Pancake Swap and all these, you know, different things, you know, and all these bridges, right? It's very confusing and the learning curve is kind of steep. So we need some kind of solution that is very normie friendly. Um, and I think it's going to come in the form of some kind of, you know, I don't necessarily think mobile phone, right? <laughs> Um, it's funny when, it, when, when I hear Sol Solana developing a phone, like my mind jumps to like a Nokia for some reason, oh, I don't know. Nice. <laughs> but it, like a Nokia in like pink and purple, like Solana's colors. <laughs> and I don't know why. Yeah. But, um, that's what it's going to take, right? Uh, it's going to take some kind of software that really does everything for you automatically, but also breaks it down very simply um you you've got to think big with crypto because ultimately the people who are in the space now you're either in here long term or you're here to develop and help you know push for mass adoption and the more people that we can get developing stuff you know products solutions software hardware whatever it takes right um but the more we can get being worked on and developed and brought to the market for the masses, the more we're all going to benefit from. Mm -hmm. Now, do I think Solana is going to be the answer to that? I don't know. Um, yeah, that, that one's kind of true. Yeah, yeah, I think it's interesting that, um, you know, the entire Solana network was able to, essentially crashed just from some bots trying to mint NFTs. Yeah, that's insane too, right? Um, and my, I'm currently just trying to figure out, I don't know if they'll, they'll go over it in this article, but what what Solana as a token is going to represent or play a part in this phone ecosystem and the SMS that they're talking about. Right, well... Uh... I guess getting on with the article then it says moreover mobile phones have become a primary method for making payments and money transfers solana is developing a payment app as part of its tech stack for mobile securing such operations is critical to address those concerns solana is releasing a protocol called seed vault which yakovenko wrote will keep private keys partitioned from wallets apps and the new android operating system uh, the popular DeFi voice who goes by Comet Shock is wary of security issues when dealing with hardware. I am very cautious about hardware wallet security. Comet Shock told the Defiant, hardware wallets need to be very diligent with um, delineating what is trusted hardware hardware, and what isn't. Comet, Comet Shock said an unsecured display can show a transaction processing as a user intended, while the actual transaction is a fraudulent one. They gave the example of a hack of Hugh Carp, founder of Nexus Mutual, in which an attacker was able to obtain Carp's hardware wallet's signature. The attacker was able to do so without the, disp without the display on Carp's computer changing. This made it hard to detect that signature on the hardware wallet would actually transfer funds to the attacker's wallet. As a part of SMS, there will also be a dApp store for decentralized apps. Apple has received significant flack for their combative stance towards crypto, specifically for preventing users to earn through DeFi applications. Google notably banned mining apps from its Play Store. And the market's response on the news of Solana's mobile-first efforts appears to be positive. Sol is up 7.1% in the last 24 hours in the mid-morning trading UK time, compared to 46 uptick in Ether. Um, I, I think that's interesting. They're going to have a DAP store, you know, that's certainly going to make, uh, DeFi on the Solana chain much easier to access for normal people. If they can, they can nail, you know, gaming apps and integrate, you know, GameFi into it, right. You know, play to earn or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, then that I could see it working. Um, maybe not so much on their phone, but on their network, right? 
<clears throat> that's definitely one solution. I do like that they're they're trying to go after the payment app. I think that is what will really get us closer to mass adoption more than anything at the current moment. It's no different than um, when the banks came out with you know direct. First, it was uh, you know cashing checks on your phone, right? Right. It made it super convenient, and then everybody started downloading you know your bank app. And then they introduced, you know, direct transfers and you didn't even need the person's, you know, account number and routing number to their bank. You needed their name and their email address as long as they had an account with the bank. Um, you know, then you were able to send somebody money to their bank account and it would just be good. It would go through their email and their phone number. So something similar needs to take place in crypto where, you know, if I want to pay Hobo, I just need Hobo's email or his his name right. and the software takes care of the wallet addresses and the private keys or maybe the private keys are, are stored offhand right like a, a cold wallet hot wallet situation um where you know you can send funds but the the it's a, essentially a cold wallet right well it says in the article that the private keys are partitioned on the drive and from my understanding that's essentially like cutting out a piece of the drive solely for the uh, private key and that's kept key. separate from the rest of the hardware on yes. the phone or software. So my, my only thing with that is there, there is like massive security risk involved there. Like massive. Um, because at, at that point you, you have access to bank accounts essentially. Right. Right. Um, so that's, it's super sketchy, but um, if they can nail it and if they can simplify it to that level, just like how the banks did it, right? You know, there was no more confusion with account numbers and routing numbers. It was simply name and email, boom, you know, you just sent money to that person. Mm -hmm. So if there's a similar way we can do that with crypto, that will be massive. For sure. And especially if we can build some kind of like QR system, you know, that we can integrate as far as retail goes. So that people can easily pay with crypto. I mean, it's no different right now than when you, when you put your card up the the chip, and it scans it. So you know, no, you no longer need to swipe or insert your card. You can just hold your card up to the machine, and it scans your your card. Right. So something very similar like that would be, in my opinion, maybe not relatively easy to do, but the the concept and the groundwork is already there to do that with crypto. So, you know, develop something like that. You'll be rewarded substantially in the market for it, and it'll massively help drive, you know, crypto adoption if we can simplify this for everybody. For sure. You know, I mean, something that I think about is they say they want to uh, develop, this, de uh, develop this payment application for the phone, but, uh, you know, to spend crypto, you need to buy things that accept crypto and there's not a whole lot of that right now you know i mean there certainly are options but it's not something super common so while they're doing a good part on their end for pushing adoption it's a two-lane road you know and i'm surely it might encourage faster adoption in those other spheres as far as um, accept accepting crypto as a payment uh, but you know it's not just going to take an effort on Solana's part to really push this. Oh, no, absolutely. It's going to be, it, it needs to be from the community and also, you know, from a, a somewhat global scale, right? Um, but the numbers can't be ignored, right? If you approach like a massive company like Walmart and you say, hey, I have this software developed, it already integrates, integrates easily with your payment your current payment solutions or your payment processors mm -hmm. and you will not only have access to you know blockchain but you also now have access to you know getting paid with i don't even know what crypto's current you know market cap size is but when you're telling a you know a client hey you're gonna have the ability to get paid from a sector that's worth you know two trillion dollars that that's something that's very appealing right because now you're mar you're able to market more 
towards a large group of people and essentially while benefiting yourself it's like a double win right so there's no reason why they wouldn't do it it would just need the software and the right push behind it to get it done right and i even thought it, it's as simple as like you know you have preferences set on your on your end as a receiver mm-hmm. where you know if you get paid it automatically sells for you and converts to usdc or usdt whatever your preference is uh, hopefully usdc um right. and so that way there's no loss of value there or maybe you're a big believer in in solana and you know as soon as you get paid in whatever crypto it automatically sells it off and converts it for you into solana mm-hmm. so there, there's a lot of unique solutions and and practicality you can offer people if you, if you go this route and, and build something like this that can be used for mass adoption and payment solutions. Yeah, you know, I mean, really, I think the biggest benefit is that funds settle instantly. You know, I mean, with all those bank transfers you were talking about and things of that nature, you know, usually you're looking at least looking at at least three days until your funds are truly settled. You know, while you might be loaned money from the bank in the meantime, so you it seems like you get the funds right away the funds are technically unsettled for quite a few days correct yes there so if you send if like you wire transfer somebody money it does show up in their bank account in like two three days but it's actually not really there it's just the bank loaning you the money but it still actually has not transferred through from one bank to the other because of how inefficient the banking system is yep same thing with checks Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, this could, and see, so I think they're talking about 2023, you know, I'm sure we'll see even more, um, crypto adoption and possibilities by then. So, uh, who knows? Could turn out real well for Solana. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, anybody that, that is building and, and trying to offer real world solutions for mass adoption is, it's going to go well for them. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, uh, let's go on to this next story here. I'm talking about a hundred million dollar hack in one of Harmony's cross chain bridges. Um, so cross chain bridges are continuing to prove themselves as DeFi's weakest link on June 23rd. Harmony, a layer one blockchain said it identified an exploit worth roughly a hundred million dollars targeting its horizon bridge. The Harmony team has begun working with national authorities and forensic specialists to identify the hacker and attempt to retrieve the stolen funds. Harmony is based in California. Harmony halted the operation of its Horizon Bridge to stop users from losing more funds and has notified centralized exchanges of the exploit to prevent the hacker from converting the stolen assets. It said its trustless Bitcoin bridge has not been impacted and as assets are stored in decentralized vaults. Horizons Bridge Facilities asset transfers between Harmony and the, or sorry, Harmony's Bridge facilitates asset transfers between Harmony and the Ethereum um, and Binance Smart Chain networks. The hacker stole Ethereum, wrapped Ether, wrapped Bitcoin, Binance Coin, Aave, Sushi, Fractshare, and AAG, in addition to stablecoins Dai, Tether, USD Coin, Binance, USD, and Frax. Harmony ranks 33rd among smart contract chains by total value locked with $70 million, according to DeFi Llama. Um, Mistrack, a crypto tracking platform, tweeted that the hacker has already begun swapping some of the ERC-20 tokens for Ether using the Uniswap decentralized exchange. The perpetu- perpetrator's wallet currently hold nearly $98.9 million worth of Ether, $1.16 million worth of BNB, Seven hundred seven hundred seventy-seven eight hundred thousand in ERC twenty tokens, and six hundred forty thousand three hundred seven in BUSD. The security of the Harmony Bridge was called into question in April when Ape Dev, Chain Stride Capital's founder, tweeted that its security was entirely dependent on two of four multi-signature wallets. 
Um, this multi-sig isn't verified on Etherscan, but the implementation seems to be on GitHub. It's modified from an earlier consensus multi-sig, but the modifications don't seem to be obvious or made public. If two of the four multi-sig signers are compromised, we're going to see another nine-figure hack. They warned, noting the bridge then secured $330 million in assets. The price of Harmony's native token one token the price of Harmony's native one token is down 12.9% in 24 hours, last changing hands for uh, two and point four. The price of Harmony, the price of Harmony's native one token is down 12.9% in 24 hours, last changing hands for 2.3 cents, according to CoinGecko. Um, man, Harmony down bad. I remember seeing that at like 30 cents, 34 cents. Oof. Yeah. Yes, uh, sir. It's all these bridges that always get hacked too. They're right. Yeah. No, it really is. You know, I want to say that Ron and Bridge hack that we saw was the biggest with like six hundred forty million, something mm-hmm. like that. Um, but you know, a hundred million dollars is surely nothing to scoff at, especially at these prices. You know, if this was back in um, November, I mean, we would that would have been worth about about four hundred million. Oof. Yep. Um. Let's see. So yeah, crushing bridges have persistently been the source of DeFi's largest hacks. Bridges operate by holding assets that are transferred from their native chain and providing users with a token for use on the destination chain, which is later destroyed to unlock the original asset when the user sends the funds back to their native chain. As such, popular bridges can quickly become enormous honeypots for hackers to target. Axie Infinity's Ron and Bridge claimed the unfortunate accolade of facilitating the largest exploit in DeFi history. This is what we were just talking about. When $615 million was stolen from it in March, Ron and was similarly secured by a 5 of 9 multi-signature wallet, with the attacker gaining control over four Ron and validators operated by Axie developer Sky and Mavis and a third-party validator run by the Axie DAO. The attack on Ron and beat out the $610 million that was drained from the Poly Network bridge in August 2021. However, nearly all of the funds were later returned to Poly Network with the Chinese cybersecurity firm Slow Mist revealing it had identified the hacker's email address, IP address, and device fingerprint. In February, Solana's wormhole bridge was hit by an attack that netted $325 million for its perpetrator. Um, That's interesting that they've found the IP address and device fingerprint of the Ronin hacker. I was unaware of that. Me too. Huh. Also didn't know that Harmony was based in California. It's interesting. Um... But yeah, these bridges got to get their stuff together. You know, I mean, when you got six hundred million dollars at risk, even five out of nine for a multi-signature is quite the small number. Too little, yeah, for sure. I mean, but in reality, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how this goes on in the back end, but it seems like regardless of of you know what what amount of wallets are needed to sign off. It's still it's still happening. So maybe there needs to be a, a different approach than just a multi sig wallet um, controlling all this. Sure. Yeah, maybe some sort of physical link. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I know it's Vitalik. I once said the future of crypto is not cross chain, but it is multi chain. Man's in the metaverse. Yeah, er, no, the he multiverse. Is. <laughs> he was born in the metaverse. Multiverse. But uh, yeah, R.I.P. Harmony, down bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure they'll still keep on kicking. But uh, hopefully, from, from yeah, from what I remember, there's nothing really special about the chain. It's just another option. Exactly. But, uh, yep, I guess we can get on with the next story here. This one's just a brief, um, interesting little segment. So, Binance partners with soccer legend Cristiano Ronaldo 
to launch exclusive NFT collections. And this is just ahead of the World Cup coming up. Um, so the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, Binance, has signed an exclusive multi-year NFT partnership with soccer legend Cristiano Ronaldo, according to an official announcement from the company. Cristiano Ronaldo is one of the greatest players in soccer history with five Ballon d'Ors and more than 800 career goals under his belt. Um, so the tweet from Binance says, We're kicking off an exclusive multi-year NFT partnership with football legend Cristiano Ronaldo. This is your opportunity to own an iconic piece of sports history and join CR7's Web3 community. Um, you know, I think it's cool to see Binance chugging on with just massive marketing, even though crypto is in the state it's in. Um, you know, it's getting a lot of negative attention. Um, also, its prices obviously have been higher than they are right now, but Binance is still pushing on and signing one of the largest soccer players ever to an exclusive NFT collection. Yes, yeah, massively huge. Um, and again, I, this... I, I mentioned something like this in in the uh, one of the arenas. The article I wrote for one of the arenas um, mm -hmm. was it the crypto dot com. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you have this massive of a marketing campaign going on, it it goes to show you that crypto is going nowhere because with the amount of reach that this has i mean this isn't necessarily arena levels of reach but it is very very large nonetheless um crypto is going nowhere because there there's so much money being spent you know as far as marketing goes to get new users and and to build trust that it's it's going to be here to stay so binance is definitely in it for the long the long term they're making moves like this and you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we see other, you know, celebrities, you know, or, or very popular, you know, stars, you know, doing similar things in the future or maybe other like massive scale marketing campaigns done in the future as well. For sure. You know, I don't know if you saw the video that I sent you on Telegram just slightly before um, we started this podcast, but you know, Snoop Dogg and Eminem just came out with a music video for a new song and like the whole music video is just a weird animation of them like turning into bored apes. Um, it's quite strange uh, to see, but, uh, and that's huge. It's two of the biggest rappers in the world. Right. Yep. You know, you know, Snoop Dogg loves his crypto. He loves crypto. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, so, CZ, the Binance founder, also commented, saying that Cristiano Ronaldo is one of the world's best footballers and has transcended sport to become an icon in multiple industries. He has amassed one of the world's most dedicated fan bases through his authenticity, talent, and charity work. We are thrilled to provide his fans with exclusive engagement opportunities to connect with Ronaldo and own a piece of iconic sports history. Um, yeah, I mean... I don't know a lick about soccer, but I know who Cristiano Ronaldo is. Um, Everybody knows who he is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, he's like the Michael Jordan of soccer, I guess. Yeah, he's he's definitely up there. Um, yeah. So just massive news for Binance. And not surprising, Binance is really on point with their marketing. For sure. But uh, let's go to this next story here, talking about Bitcoin miners struggling to break even as hash rate soars. So Bitcoin has been outperforming other currencies for over a decade. However, Bitcoin mining is facing a rough time amid the recent crypto market correction. Um, as the crypto winter hovers over the industry, Bitcoin miners are selling off large Bitcoin reserves to cover expenses. During the recent bear market, mining companies have found it difficult to make something out of the market situation. Additionally, the hash rate is at its highest level, with the price of Bitcoin swinging around the $20,000 mark. As a result, miners are finding it difficult to make headway. Furthermore, according to Arcane Research's report, most Bitcoin miners are selling more Bitcoin stash than ever before, a large shift from the first four months of 2022. 
However, the current mass sell-off of Bitcoin calls for concern as the miners have no control over the market changes. According to a Bitcoin mining anal analyst, um, Jadron Melarud, um, I have no idea how you say that. It's right here on the screen, though. Forgive me, Mr. Jadron. Um, miners are forced to liquidate many of their holdings due to market route. Um, Melarud added that the downside is that it drives the price of Bitcoin further down. Recently, a Toronto-based Bitcoin mining company, Bitfarm, sold a whopping 3,000 Bitcoin. This represents more than half of its total supply. Bitfarm revealed that it sold the Bitcoin stash due to mounting debt incurred by the company. In a press release, Jeff Lucas, Bitfarm's financial advisor, disclosed that as we advance, the company will cease holding its, hodling its Bitcoin production. However, Lucas noted that Bitfarm is still bullish on the price appreciation of Bitcoin in the long run. Bitfarm's decision to stop hodling its daily Bitcoin tokens is a strategic change to enable the company to focus on its mining operation. Mining has played a role in ensuring the stability and continu continu mining has played a role in ensuring the stability and continuity of cryptocurrencies. Although expensive and labor-intensive, it offers operators a handsome return. Many industry insiders see Bitcoin mining as one of the most lucrative crypto ventures. However, this is not to say it has never experienced any setbacks. Even before the crypto market meltdown, miners have been grappling with many challenges that are yet to be addressed. Mining companies face some problems, energy intensive shortage of skilled hands, high operation costs, strict government reg regulations, etc. Um, so yeah, you know, I mean, really, it just depends where they're getting the, their energy from. You know, some spots energy is going to be far more expensive some spots energy is going to be cheaper um i'm not an energy expert so i can't delve into that but you know naturally bitcoin mining takes up tons of energy um and then you know the bitcoin that you mine is worth whatever the market price is and then all these miners are having to dump on each other and it's just kind of creating a self-fulfilling prophecy where they've got to pay off their debts and they're crushing the price even more making their profits worth even less. Exactly. And, man, the other thing, too, that's crazy is uh, I saw a lot of pictures. Let me see if I put them up. Um, but there are, like, thousands of GPUs that are going to be hitting the market soon from these mining companies that are, are no longer going to be mining. Um, I don't know if you've seen them. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, no, I have. And the price of GPs is tanking. I mean, I remember um, probably 2018, maybe 2019, around there, price of graphics cards skyrocketed because of Bitcoin. They were all scalped. Uh. can't find it but uh when you edit the uh when you edit this hobo add a, add a picture of uh of all those uh gpus yeah. like it's it's Will scary do. like it's it's thousands and thousands just laid out on the ground mm -hmm. yeah no i mean i've even seen seen some stories of you know those people that are buying them wholesale and reselling and being stuck with tons of graphics cards that they've mm -hmm. now have to take a loss on Oof. yeah they bought the dip. <laughs> they did, and it kept dipping. <laughs> That's how I feel right now. Um, yeah. So, they're going. Okay. Um, the rising hash rate. So the hash rate of a network is the total of the computational power used in Bitcoin mining. A single hash rate represents a computer creating a number to guess a series of cryptographic uh, features. Whoever among the miners guesses the correct number will be allowed to validate a block of transactions added to the blockchain. This is repeated until the required blocks are, a, are achieved. Um, since June, the mining revenue has been steadily declining and cannot stay above $20 million for a single block. Miners earn rewards for their role in the mining process. As the broader market continues to struggle, crypto mining is becoming less profitable amid the high hash rate. 
Um, you know, it makes me wonder if there's other coins at the moment that are going to be more profitable and if we're going to see any of these uh, Bitcoin mining companies perhaps move to other coins as Bitcoin becomes less profitable. Um, and I also wonder if in any scenario Bitcoin would ever remain unprofitable to mine for a prolonged period yeah. of time. You know, if we face an energy crisis and Bitcoin just isn't at a high price, I mean, we could see Bitcoin just not be profitable to mine. Yeah, it may never be profitable to mine again either. Um, you know, only time will tell, but it's a possibility. And definitely with the, the global shift on, on going green, um, definitely... You know, I, I don't see mining being a long-term, a long-term operation. Right. I did find two pictures. I found the one I wanted to show you. If you want to throw it up on your screen, I, I sent it to you on Telegram. It is crazy. Let me see here. Mr. Guns. Oh my, yeah. Oh Lord, dude. Yeah. That is a lot of graphics cards. Yeah. That is from two days ago. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's hundreds of graphics cards. Thousands, just, what do you mean? Chilling, <laughs> just chilling on the floor. It's literally thousands. Those are stacks of like six, seven, eight. Yeah. You know, and that's not even counting the boxes and the pallets they've got in the background. Mm hmm. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Thousands. RIP the mining all the mining homies yep um but uh yeah I haven't really looked into how this how such a circumstance is correlated with the structure of the Bitcoin market in the past but I think that would be interesting to look into you know if this has happened before and at what time um, at what time within the market it's happened. But, uh, yeah, I suppose we'll get on to the next story here. Um, so this one is talking about the application of blockchain technology in the manufacturing industry. So blockchain technology is an open shared ledger system that makes transaction authentication very safe and reliable. As materials, goods, components, and funds move through the manufacturing supply chain, blockchain technology can be used to make the process more transparent, scalable, and secure. Manufacturers are working on blockchain implementations that might help them improve operations, gain more visibility into supply networks, and track assets with unparalleled precision. Blockchain has the ability to change the way organizations create, manufacture, and scale their goods, also, it is changing how companies relate um, because it makes it easier for competitors who have to work together in the same ecosystem to trust each other. Blockchain can increase openness and accountability at every step of the industrial value chain, from getting the raw materials to delivering the final product. In the short review, we shall look at the different ways the manufacturing industry can leverage blockchain in its process. Um, so, supply chain management. All manufacturing businesses are based on supply chains. Most of them can use the blockchain's distributed database structure to block um, and block-based framework to categorize value exchange transactions and make them more efficient. By scaling, su by scaling supplier time delivery, product quality, and, tr and track and traceability, manufacturers can better meet delivery schedules, enhance product quality, and start selling more. Transparency in the supply chain is very important for manufacturers. Food companies have to follow the one up, one back stipulation, which means that they have to keep track of where food comes from and where it goes. With blockchain, they can keep track of shipping information, storage temperatures, and the expiration dates of their produce. In this way, food companies can determine precisely what batch of produce has gone bad and recall it before it reaches the customer. Uh, so, you know, I think it's worth noting that something I've really been looking into is kind of like the logistical logistical effects of blockchain not just crypto you know because although crypto operates on blockchain um i believe blockchain is its own technology that can be 
very useful practically outside of just finance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For authentication purposes, for sure. Right. Yeah. Um, and many other things, but yeah, I don't know about the whole food thing though. <laughs> I don't see it being practical. Um, I don't know. That's just me. Yeah. I guess we will find out. We will. Um, so warranty management and counterfeit protection. It's vital for manufacturers to have smooth warranty management processes to not only stop fraud and keep costs low, but also to give customers a great experience. Companies face many problems from false claims and fake goods to misconceptions about warranty coverage. The manufacturing industry loses billions of dollars due to fraudulent warranty claims. One study estimated that the cost could be as high as $2.6 billion yearly. When manufacturers have to deal with fraudulent warranty claims, it often costs them more money because it uses up their resources. But with blockchain, businesses can check the information about a product by um, creating an unchangeable record that can't be counterfeited. This can cut down the number of false claims ha handled by a manufacturer and improve the process for customers with genuine claims. It is also possible to recoup lost money and protect a company's reputation by registering each product on the blockchain registry with a unique identity and key properties. This lets the product be scanned at every step from when it is made until it is sold to ensure it is real. I mean, I, this is just going back to your point of, you know, blockchain being used for verification. Yeah, I think that's it's the easiest and strongest suit it can take right now. Um, you know, it could be as simple as just in the manufacturing process, you implement QR codes. And when you scan them, it, it takes you to, you know, the open C for Rolex. And you can see that it's an authentic Rolex um, verified by like the official Rolex, you know, open C account. Right. As an example. Yeah, you know, I mean, from what it sounds like, they'd be essentially creating NFTs for every product. Exactly. But uh, getting on with the article here. So preventative maintenance. Manufacturers who want to get the most out of their uptime can use business analytics and tools like the Internet of Things to discover operational issues before equipment breaks down. Blockchain can enhance this process by adding another layer of visibility and accountability, making it easier to get the right parts to the right place at the right time. Using blockchain, maintenance work orders could also be sent, sent securely to different service vendors, and the best match can then be chosen automatically depending on location, expertise, and availability. To make it easier to hire outsourced maintenance, manufacturers can add service contracts and installation records for each of their equipment to a blockchain. The blockchain can then make it disposable for scheduled or sorry, can then make it possible for scheduled maintenance and payments to be made automatically. An item that needs to be fixed can send out a service request and create a smart contract for the work. The blockchain record can also include information about a machine's maintenance history that can't be changed. Such applications will make machinery more reliable and make it easier to track its wear and tear. Um, yeah, I mean, I think these points right here are all solid. You know, I think the use of smart contracts in a practical manner like this would be super cool. I mean, it sounds like they would be automatically created and executed and all that. So, I mean, seriously, it could create a huge change in uh, efficiency. Definitely. Um. And then the immutability of blockchain technology means that it is uniquely suited to act as a document of proof, a record of ownership, or proof of process. As such, the technology can be used to keep track of the steps required in um, policing highly regulated manufacturing environments such as food production, pharmaceuticals, and hazardous materials. Recording actions and outputs on a blockchain will create an immutable audit trail for regulatory authorities to efficiently and reliably verify compliance. Additionally, regulators can get near real-time access to manufacturers' data, allowing them to be more proactive in their work. Manufacturing has always been seen as a sector resistant to change, but technologies like blockchain, artificial intelligence, and machine learning are slowly revolutionizing the industry by providing a secure, unchangeable, and transparent distributed ledger. Blockchain can help 
improve processes, cut costs, and enhance the manufacturing ecosystem as a whole. As blockchain technology gets better, it will help manufacturers overcome some of the issues that have kept them from using other next-generation technologies and new business models on a much larger scale. Because of blockchain, manufacturers will be able to improve efficiency by working together and sharing data across secure networks. Um, I think this is an amazing article, and I also think that really b blockchain is going to change a lot of things to make um, a lot of industries more efficient because it is, um, you know, it's not fungible. It's always verifiable. Um, you cannot, it's instant. Yeah, it's instant. You can't change records. Um, so, I mean, as long as what's being entered is truthful, there's no going back and editing the record. Um, but, yeah, quite the cool story and cool concept to think about definitely i mean it's the future for blockchain again we need the we need the software built to uh to get us there right yep i mean i think it'll only be a handful of years until we really start to see it creep into uh, the infrastructure of our everyday life sure but uh yeah, I think that wraps up all of these stories in this week's Crypto Club. Um, it's been a pleasure bringing you 10 episodes of Crypto Club. Woo! Can't, yeah, it's craziness. Can't wait to keep bringing you more and more. Um, it's a pleasure doing this every week. Um, and yeah, make sure you guys check out Coinscan.com. All of our socials and website links will be in the description. Uh, you know, with crypto only getting more and more adopted, we are doing what we can to not only ensure safety, but also educate people within the space on some of the best practices um, and things that Gans and I wish we would have known when we first started crypto. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, make sure you check us out. Um, this has been the CoinScan team coming at you with episode 10 of Crypto Club. Right on, sir. Very good. <laughs>